while we're waiting on the technology, I first want to thank you for the special music. 34 years ago, last May, my wife and I walked down the wedding aisle to that song. Amen. Amen. So I'm starting, <clears throat> excuse me, with a little bit of emotion. But God is good. Y'all need to pray for me. Satan does not want my message to be delivered today. My heart's giving me fits. And I think it's because all my butterflies are not in formation yet. So just, it's probably more nerves than anything. But I, I really want to thank you all. Um, just kind of the way we set this thing up because of kind of what we're doing here. Let me see if I can get this thing to connect here. Still not connected yet, Brother Ray. It takes a while sometimes. Oh, I know we're having some progress here. Are you seeing anything up there? No. Are you wanting, are you doing? Projector. I'm sorry. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Well, I had no idea that you were doing any of that. Uh, oh, cool hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Uh, I don't know how to do any of this. I haven't even showed any of them. All right, I'll just start with looking here while we're trying to get that working. Um, my objectives. First of all, a little bit about, about me. I'm an old college prof and a computer geek, programmer, mathematician, can you say geek? I'm not a qualified public speaker, but what I want found out and what I've learned, I want to share with you. And the bottom line, I've looked at many people, so I've looked at lots of, done a lot of reading over the last couple of years. Most people say, everybody says the Lord's coming soon. Any disagreement on that? How many of y'all would say that it's very soon? Okay, we'll actually talk to this later on this afternoon about the war in Israel. We'll talk about that a little bit as to what's going on. Is that a sign of Bible prophecy? No, but it's a sign of satanic prophecy. Yes, we'll take a look at that uh, a little later today. And uh, the next thing is, uh, let me ask you a question. If there was a 144,000 volt high tension line laying across the parking lot, would you want me to tell you about it? Yeah? Or let's put it a little simpler. I found this fantastic restaurant that has the very best food I've ever had, and they sell it for a song. Would you want me to tell you about it? Yes. All right, so to the, I have got a warning for you. The Lord is coming soon. Now, pretend you are a general about to go to war. The Bible talks about this. Christ, you use the example. You know, if you're about to go to war with somebody and you've got 20,000, you've got 50,000, what are you going to do? Well, you're either going to go research the situation or you're going to pursue for peace. What does any good officer do if he's about to go into war? He's going to find out about the enemy, isn't he? So that's what I want to do today. I want you to understand what Satan is up to, where he's headed, what's going on in the world. Now, I, in order to do that, we would need about three weeks. So what I've done is I've cut this down into small pieces, and uh, well, we've got something back there. I'm still not connecting to the little thing up here on the projector. Uh, try changing the... Uh, Ah. All right. 
while that's coming up, I'm going to I'm going to fake it till they make it. It says HDMI one. I'm on HDMI. Uh, try two. Two. There's two. There it is. No. Oh, that's a projector. Or that's the that's the CD player. We may have. I'm on one. Uh, Y'all know, just a minute, let's pray for the Lord to do this. Lord, Satan does not want this message to be delivered because we are going to be exposing his lies and his plans for the last days, which we need to understand so that we will not be deceived. So, Lord, this is your church, this is your message, and Satan's been attacking me all day, Lord, and I pray that you would put his plans to naught and let us figure out this electronic thing in Jesus' name. And I'm going to apologize for not jumping ahead and trying to figure this out before we got here. Um, the projector is working, but it's not seeing. Let me unplug this and try it again. That's a good sign. Nope, flashing again. There's a piece of equipment sitting on top of the projector up here. The projector's on, but there's a little piece of equipment sitting on top up there that's, that this talks to. This is hot. This is flashing. I use it at the house all the time. When this is flashing, is because that thing up there is not powered up. I'm not sure what we need to do. It's working. This, yeah, no, this is the one from here. It's not mine. Yeah. That's not going to work because this, thing, this thing's not talking. It, it, it sees that there is one, but it's not flashing in green light. It doesn't do anything. We lost the camera on top now. There's nothing. The HDMI cable is not run anymore, I don't believe, for a backup. This worked the last time I used it. So, uh, all right, I'm going to be, going to be a lot of reading up here for a while. Maybe the Lord will fix this. Ellen White says in a letter, it says, May the Lord give us no rest, day or night, to those who are now careless and indolent in the cause and the work of God. The end is near. This is that which Jesus would have us keep ever before us, the shortness of the time. So my objective is to have the, look at the shortness of the time here. Um, got a great big ladder. I'll set my laptop up here. We'll run an HDMI cable. And now they one. This is 100% videos I want to play. There's slides, there's music, there's things I need you to see. This is a multi-powered PowerPoint presentation. It won't gain much. I will hit the, hit the highlights and maybe we'll do this another Sabbath. So we'll dig through this. Here's another note from Ellen White. Christians should always be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world is an overwhelming surprise and this preparation they should do make diligently studying the word of God and striving to do more conform its lives to the precepts. We're to keep the shortness of the times ever before us. All right, Christ is waiting for us to be prepared. Why is, uh, why is Christ not come, come yet? Because he's waiting for people. 
read the 1888 materials, nobody was ready. He's calling on us to be ready. Uh, once we're prepared, the Holy Spirit will return, and we will have the privilege of hastening His return. Now, does that something that excites you? Okay, think about that. So, anyway, uh, we can hasten His return. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. So now, before we go any further, what's going on here? Okay. Before we go any further, I'd like to start with prayer. Dear Lord, this is all about you. I pray, Lord, that this speaker whose sins are many, you'll forgive that he may stand behind you and you step forward and touch each of our hearts. Lord, that this message will have more power without all of the fancy stuff that this guy's trying to put in it. Just let us speak your word today and speak through me that what I say will be strictly from your throne. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so now the, the question comes, should we fear the end of time, the end last days? There's a wonderful heresy out there, which I won't take time to talk about, called the rapture. And that's a great thing for people to think about because it means I'll get a second chance. Once all those Christians disappear and the airplanes fall out of the air and all that stuff, ooh, well then I'll turn to the Lord. It's a lie. We will have to go through the, the, tough, the tough times if we are alive. And I actually believe, as old as I am, I may well live to see those days. But should it cause us to fear? Why not? Have you read the end of the book yet? God wins? You know? Uh, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We will all be changed in a moment. In the twentieth of an eye, the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible. We have seen the rest of the story. I don't see any smiles out there. This is an hallelujah event. I mean, think about how tough life is right now. Think about a moment in your life where you have absolutely no worries about the next day. Have you ever been there? Just absolute pleasure, no joys. You're having a wonderful time. God is good. I'm going to share something I've never shared with anybody before. I was not close to the Lord, and I don't know the meaning of this. I'm still looking for it. But I was in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden I had absolute, complete peace. Lasted only for a moment. And then like bubbles, I was trying to catch it, to hang on to it. But absolute peace. I know what it feels like. Nothing to worry about. Everything was exactly the way I wanted. I was centered in God's will. Everything was perfect. To think about that. Think about what your life would be like. How many of y'all have had sad goodbyes? Yeah? Think about no more goodbyes. All right? Let's look at another one. Here. Uh... For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will be rise, raised first, and then we, Paul thought he was coming Christ's day, will rise to meet them in the air, and then we shall ever be with the Lord. Always peace. This in life is the practice. This is the two days for you football players. This is to get us ready. Tough times make people tough. Uh, here's another thought. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Think about the new Jerusalem coming down, being in the new Jerusalem. You guys, I don't see any fire out there yet. Notify your face if you're happy about the fact that the Lord's coming. All right, here's another one. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. All right, I put together, uh, just for your notes, you want to get the rest of the story here. And let you, if you want to see what this is all about, send me an email. My email is S, as in Sam, K, first name Ken, last name C-U-L-P at gmail.com. 
and I will send you a PDF. It'll have all the slides, all the videos that you can watch, plus all the references that I have made over a period of time. All right? And so here comes text support. And so you send me that. Uh, I've got a series of links for further studies and things of that sort. All right. So, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. You can look that up if you wish. But the last sentence in there, it says, That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. This is what I am about today. This flashing yellow green light means it ain't talking to the dongle on top. So, short of grabbing the 16-foot ladder, we're probably stuck. So, my objective is to help us to stand today. Then I saw... And Another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, sang with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth the springs of waters. This is the three angels' message. This is the last call to this lost generation. Do you realize, and I think if I could have had a chance to go through this, I would convince you, that you are being privileged, what a privilege it is that to be able to live in the last days. Ellen White talks about it. He's, you know, everything was dark and then these little lights started appearing and then they started to spread and more lights. You are now called to be the light of the world. A city that's hit on a hill cannot be hid. Um, so, Ellen White wrote a book called uh, The End Times. It's available on PDF or online if you'd like to get a hold of it. But when these things come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. So, last days mean time is running out. Let me ask it this way. If you knew you were going on a trip, a three-month trip, would you start packing the same day? Or maybe the day before. No. We just got through doing that. Two months before, I started making a list of all the things we needed to take. When we got up there, I kept adding to it. <laughs> Needless to say, we didn't get there with all the stuff we needed. Walmart came in handy. Here's the bottom line on this. I'm going to give you the bottom line, then I'll see what I can fill in on things. We have at most two, maybe three years to develop a character that will allow us to stand in the last days. Maybe a little more. I was thinking we had two or three to five years, but this war in Israel and what I can talk about later on this evening, uh, or this afternoon, perhaps we can get that done by then. Uh, we don't have it. This Israel war might mean that things are happening really fast. The thing is, if it goes global, this is not a bad place to keep tuned to the news. If it's all the players at the U.S. ships now shot down 15. Uh, missiles and two cru cruise missiles yesterday while they were trying to transit the Suez Canal headed for Israel. This thing's going global. All right? All right, so here is part one. It's to cover the historical events. And I can't show you the slide, but we'll just talk through it. Here's one. In the days of Noah. Thank you, Brother Ray, for your reading of that scripture. It couldn't have been more timely. As in the day of Noah and the days of Lot, what did we see? All right, total moral decline and violence filled the earth. Would you say that kind of characterizes this world? Yes. Wow, digital currency can't buy or sell. That's being implemented. It's already implemented in some countries in Africa. It'll be in this country by 2025. That means what you have in the bank, Uncle Sam will get to tell you how you get to spend it. If you don't have a good enough green score, you ain't gonna be able to spend your money. Again, I'm going to finish short today because I'm cutting out a lot of detail, but the love of many will grow cold. Church memberships in free fall. Wars and rumors of wars. We're going to take a look at the papacy and its drive for world control. Like absolute internal documents for the papacy says its number one goal is to get back to where they were when they had total control of the world during the Dark Ages. That's their goal, and they are almost there. And I'll cover some of that. 
But then this gospel shall be preached to all the nation. And then the end. Talk about our federal form of government is broken, the earth growing old. We'll talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. All right. <clears throat> so here's the problem. Here's one of the questions that comes up. Um, 2 Peter 3, verse 4 says, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Have you had that from somebody? Aren't you feeling that when you hear me saying, I'm going to talk about the end days. Well, the first thing that came to your mind, oh, here's another one. You know, some of you were there, right? I know. I've been in these messages. I think. I, but this is what we are. So what we need to do is take a look that what is different right now? Beloved, do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, the day, with the Lord, a day is a thousand years, and one thousand years is a day. But the Lord is not slack concerning His promise concerning you, but is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to saving knowledge of Him. In the Luke's account of the wedding feast, the very last phrase in there from the heavenly Father is that my house may be full. I'll try again. Ah, we have blue light. Okay, so now let's try again. It's connected. Oh, we've got to do square. We check your different HDMI now. We have the right one. Let's do that. If that doesn't work, I'm going to recycle the laptop. That's what you need to do. Get your laptop. You have too many programs running in the background. <laughs> no, no, it's, it, it is. It, everything's been cleaned. I just re <laughs> Things are happening here. Trying to figure out how to light your fire. I think God's wood's wet. <laughs> um, sorry about all this technical stuff. I should have tried all this before we got started. Um, but what's what's different now in the world? Well, now, when in Paul's day, they talk about the whole world. They weren't they weren't even talking about Central America, South America, China, uh, all the rest. That really wasn't. Now, when they say the whole world, we're talking about it. There is out there, which I will take time to talk about, uh, the Catholic Church, uh, not the Catholics, but the top, the top levels of the Catholic Church are positioned, they own about a third of the resources in the United States, and the world, I'm sorry. They have the wherewithal, they have the manpower, and their number one objective is to take control. That's one of the things that's different. The other thing is um, hate. Hate abounds everywhere. The veneer of civilization. Praise God! All right. Kai is good. All right. I'll try this again then. See if I can get over there. Oh. Wrong button. Yeah, I can see here too. I, can. I should not. All right, back up here. Let's let's get to this in real quick. All right, I have a PDF. I can send you a PDF 
that will have in it the all three PowerPoint presentations and with, with all these slides and all the remarks underneath that I'm going to say, plus additional comments and resources underneath. And there's also this whole page of resources here that you can do click on. Everything I talk about, if I reference something, I have a link to it. So if you want to read the original content that this came from, this is designed to be a home study guide, and I'm preaching pieces out of it real quick here. So that's one of the things I want to point out. S-K-C-U-L-P at gmail.com. All right. Question one, what is different now? Well, many, many ways things are different now. Uh, wars and rumors of wars, yes, we've always had those. Terrorism is different, though. That's a new kind of warfare. Um, the first horseman, the second horseman in uh, Revelation chapter 6, take peace from the earth. You see, how many of y'all are kind of familiar with what's been going on in a large majority of Mexico? You know what that's like? And there are many places around the world where that is happening. That's coming here, all right? Uh, I haven't got time to talk about it, but Satan sets up two sides and makes, Satan is creating the conflicts here. Watch a few videos of Walter By. I'll recommend them, all right? Uh, <clears throat> COVID was a planned virus. It was engineered, it was planned. They're even telling us that the next one's coming in November. I've heard from several people, the next, the next plague's coming in November. They've got it scheduled. Uh, my saddest thing, I think, is that my kids won't get to experience the wonderful country that we grew up in. All right. Here's another reason. Why study Bible prophecy? One reason, Revelation tells us to. Blessed is he who reads, hears, and keeps the things that are written here because the time is near. It was near in John's day, but it's nearer now. All right, here's a quote. The time is upon us when the miracle working power of the arch deceiver will be more decidedly revealed. We are seeing that. And his deceptions will increase in their delusive attraction so that they will perplex and if possible deceive the very elect. The prince of darkness with his evil angels is working upon the Christian world inducing those who profess the name of Christ to stand under the banner of darkness to make war with those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. This is what's happening right now. This is all around us. Hey, communism. We can, we can, we can agree with the papacy. We can, we can go along with their stuff as long as we can all get along together. Not too good. Another thing, third angel's message. Motivate us. Tell the world. Our ministers are not doing their whole duty. The attention of the people should be called to the moment, the momentous event which is so near at hand the signs of the time should be kept fresh before the people. All right. That's my marching orders. That's why I'm here today. All right. Um, just a couple of quick thoughts from Matthew 24, looking at the clock here. Um, wow, that is really blurry. That's another issue, I guess, we'll have to see. It's, it's blurry back there, too, so the problem's coming from my laptop. <coughs> huh? That's not, oh, okay.